Good afternoon. We've been hearing a lot about culture of companies, and I would like to start by explaining um, a very different aspect of what we were discussing today, which is more about excellence of production uh, as far as design is concerned, respect of design and realization. Um, I uh, was born here in Delhi and uh, moved to Europe uh, when I was about 15 and discovered fashion there and moved on to Paris by the time I was 19 and went to a age-old school which has been existing since the 1850s and had many designers go there to learn the ancient craft of draping and cutting and um, well bringing out the aesthetics of a garment and the so-called intelligence of a garment to a very high degree. Um, this demanded very very structured workshops in which you could imagine that artisans have to work in their traditional principles but in an organized manner like in the industry. So it's a kind of an encounter of the industry and of artisans doing exceptionally high valued and high quality uh, garments. Um, I would like to start by um, showing you uh, one small, I brought two small videos and I will just have the first one which is about the collection just to give you an idea of what we're talking about. This is a collection all about living in the city. It's about the urban structures and skylines that surround us. It's about how this fascinating structure was very often the inspiration for architects like Le Corbusier or artists like Mondrian and how this cubist movement became a kind of a reality for all of us and we're actually living in it. So it's inspired by all of that. une femme urbaine qui a un, un caractère affirmé, qui est, représente une position et qui euh, vit dans la ville et qui a une relation directe avec euh, l'art et l'architecture, je pense. This is a collection that is really made for every occasion as long as the woman really feels she can identify herself to it. It's about working in the morning, it's about a business lunch, it's about a cocktail with friends in the evening, it's about a gala dinner. Every element is actually made with a certain thought of minimalism but not too much, which actually means that it's her who's the star of the clothes. So to make these uh, collections at that level, you need a very specialized workshop, of course, and you need drapers uh, with a certain hierarchy inside. Now, encountering this, we noticed that, uh, in fact, lean is not very far from what we were doing anyway. So I'd just like to make a presentation of the factory right now before we go ahead. Hi, I'm Heyman. This is Le Kwane Heyman. Le Kwane Heyman Collection. Welcome to this company that I founded with my partner Le Kwane in the early 80s in Paris. Freshly graduated from one of the rare schools that actually teaches the secrets of haute couture, we set up a business in Paris that became a member of the highly prestigious Couture Syndicate for about two decades. The techniques of haute couture were so different from everything one knows that it seemed absolutely impossible for us to set up a ready-to-wear business that we were actually dreaming of. So we decided some ten years ago to move production and everything to India. Coming back to India and setting this thing in Gogao was all about the same precision, but this time machine-made. The move to India in 2000 was something about the dawning of New India that I wanted to be a part of. And uh, the amazing amount of hotels that were getting constructed in this country just felt like a, an opportunity that was so golden, much bigger than fashion in a way. And this is exactly what we did. Using our fashion knowledge, we thought corporate design was a very interesting option and we started doing that. We thus set up a whole series of workshops that each and every one 
dealt with a single corporate kind of a business, corporate meaning our corporate business. It was about leather workshops and gentlemen's workshops and ladies workshops and embroidery workshops. I'll take you through. We have an urban line for India which is all about less expensive clothes and that can go into secondary shops, meaning not our own shops. The line we're producing here also is LH Jeans. It's all about casual Saturday and Friday wear. So all of these together give you a good image of what we are producing here in this company. When you come to think of all these things we're producing, they really need a lot of thinking, they need a lot of conceiving. And I think that is actually the future of this country. It's about making products in this country, not just by production, but also by thought. It needs a whole concept, and I think that is the future. Um, so you could see in this, um, in this, uh, video that we have quite a few different workshops that complement each other. It's not just clothes, it's uh, the lower part of the factory is all about production so we have some 200 machines there and also use our dressmaking knowledge over the, over the times uh, to, to attract uh, clients of a much higher level to, to India. Uh, so we have a few um, uh, French and other American companies that are selling us and sending us work. Sometimes it's just five units, but um, the work charge is such that they are charged over 1,000 euros one piece just to be assembled. So uh, this demands, of course, um, a working uh, procedures that are very, very specialized, and this is why I have uh, started uh, the lean procedure. In this, uh, the lean procedure for us was preceded by um, a lot of uh, um, cultural changes. We had mentioned a couple of times earlier today that the culture that can get you to lean is extremely decisive. So coming from this Western culture, for us it was easier, I think, to, to, to share this knowledge with the workers, with the carriers, in which everyone is invited to contribute to the, to the product. So the individual uh, training of the different carriers as well as the head of departments uh, makes them actually culturally into a part of the product, which then uh, permits us to, 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 to uh, replicate the whole uh, system and the idea into production as well. So this one by one system actually is, is quite, um, how would I say, it's a part of our DNA already and, um, and we uh, reinforce it by reinforcing the individuals of the company. So uh, there have been, of course we are uh, trying to implement um, or planning to implement ISO uh, at the same time as Lean. Um, which are both underway. Uh, we got our, the, the classic uh, compliances from um, BSCI earlier this year. And uh, all of this uh, helps us to, to, to reinforce, as I said, uh, through the culture and, and the climate, the, the single person. So uh, likewise, we have now started um, workshops against uh, sexual harassment because that seems to be quite a big topic. We are employing a lot of women in our workshops who um, changed the ambience also. Uh, an all-male uh, um, presence of the workers in other factories I've noticed is, is much more industrial, whereas this is a much softer um, aspect of the same industry. Um, we train and retain um, we, we, we train and retain a, a skill as much as we can and um, some 25 head of departments have been through management training to, to get a proper approach to 
well, a lot of international clients that we have, so English is a must. Uh, we're giving English classes to, to some 15 head of departments now on, on, on Saturdays. And as I told you, sexual harassment uh, prevention uh, workshops for, uh, for the ladies. And also um, uh, now, um, of course, a very kind of exact uh, procedure of people to, to um, respect and to, 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 to uh, reinforce the execution of design, which is very, very important for international clients. Um, the main uh, topic of, uh, of, of our work right now is what we call DIFOTIS, which is delivery in full, on time and in spec, um, which we have been um, uh, re reasonably well achieving, I think to about 85-87%. Um, and uh, of course the biggest topic remains teamwork, um, how to get the people to actually really work together and not to uh, establish a competition within the clusters and the groups. Um, that is basically um, the structure of the company. We, since we're just in the beginning of the lean, um, the, the, the travel to lean, uh, I cannot give you any results as yet, but I can tell you that people are quite adapted to it and uh, the culture seems to have conducted us into understanding it properly. Thank you. Uh, so I think uh, somebody asked that question, uh, Hemant, that, you know, if it's a small order of 100, 200 pieces, can we do, can you, can we do lean? So you just heard Hemant talk about an order for one piece. He said one piece can be as much as a thousand euro. Now the traditional mindset is that how do we generate millions of standard hours that's one way of looking at it. How do I generate millions of standard hours, get more value for the business, right? More volumes. And then there is this other approach where Hemant is talking about creativity, about design. And then he feels that so that he gets his samples out probably, I'm guessing, sampling and uh, bulk production done very quickly. Well, and you know, sorry to interrupt you yeah. in this artistic context, sometimes the, the prototype itself is so complicated to make that the client does a Skype um, uh, with us, explains everything, sends a sketch, sends, sends the material and makes us cut it and make the prototype and sometimes it comes out differently than they expect. But it is permitted at this high level creativity. Right. So the, I think the common thread uh, why he's talking about lean and I, I'm, I'm trying to piece together that you have Somebody like uh, Pramod Mishra who's talking nuts and bolts, absolutely down on the floor. And then you had Manish Sachar who speak, spoke about the culture, about the importance of understanding, being on the bus, what's the big picture as to why we should do lean, how top management was involved. And then you had, you just listened to Heyman Saga speak about uh, design, creativity and where that fits in. So that's the whole spectrum of... Uh, uh, of wh where lean can actually be applied and used for this uh, for the apparel industry and not just in the uh, automotive field. Any questions? Please write them down. Else, I would just like to mention that what um, what was mentioned yesterday at the opening talk was about either you really get organised with your work or you go into high creativity and create your brand, which is precisely the. <laughs> okay, um, there's one question. Coming from the West, what was the, biggest what was the biggest challenge you faced on the Indian shop floor other than the culture? I'll repeat that. Coming from the West, what was the biggest challenge you faced on the Indian shop floor? Um, the, there's a very major difference between the West and here is that out there um, talent is, cert is certified. Um, people go through apprenticeships and internships and schooling and they have a, in, in our classic workshop in Paris, uh, we would have three or four categories and this is only artisans of, of different workers. You would call them a first hand, which means the person who is very, very experimented, has more than 15 years of hand working experience. Uh, you'll have a second hand, a third hand and a and an intern or an apprentice right underneath. So these people, they start as apprentices and can grow up uh, this hierarchy and become heads of a workshop afterwards, earning quite amazing amounts of money. I think that was brilliantly said. He said, uh, talent is certified, he said. That's right. So certified, that means what we call a karigar, he's certified, that he's, he's got this level of creativity, yes. this level, and then this man has a career progression, this man or woman, 
and she or he can go all the way up to being the head of a workshop. You That's said. right. So head of a workshop, obviously in a design department. You see here, I, hear, I get a tailor and they tell me that his grandfather used to work for the English and that's wonderful. But mm. that's not a certification. <laughs> yeah, that's not a certification. Yeah. Okay, so that's one big difference. Does that answer your question? Okay. Anybody else? But how did he adapt, you know? Yeah, go ahead. Well, I'm yeah. doing the same thing now. I'm trying to, uh, I have, uh, I have identified um, from production in the beginning uh, uh, a group of what I call super tailors. They would be category one and they have all walked, walked uh, they've all moved up to the sampling department where we, in sampling department, by the way, we don't only develop materials, sorry, new pieces. We also develop, we also do very, very small productions because if you have a production of just three pieces or, or 10 pieces or 15 pieces, it needs extreme attention. So we have in introduced the same hierarchy into our workshops and are giving people, so we have this category of super tailors who earn more than the others and are the people who get the most difficult pieces. So jackets with, with you know, with, with complicated armholes and stuff like that, these guys get to do it. And uh, we also have uh, technicians come over from Europe uh, twice, three times a year sometimes to help us with the draping of the collection and also give formations to these guys. So um, there's a lot of appreciation, not 100% not of course, because there's some people who, who cannot uh, find their place in, a, in, 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 in this kind of a culture where everyone is answerable for himself. There's not someone above who comes and responds for the person. Trying to. <laughs> Hello. Uh, you are one extreme case, mm. I think, in this whole industry. Probably. <laughs> Well, you know, you know, maybe there is a, maybe there Hello. is a. So what I'm saying is that as exceptionally as you are doing, and it's so great, is this on? Can you hear me? Yeah. Huh. See, you you done a great job. You've come from there, and the question was, how did you adapt? Yes. You see, because that was an important question. Mm. But anyway, you have adapted well. Mm. Now you make five pieces, thousand euros each. You got 5,000 euros. No, For us to earn 5,000 euros, we have to ship what, almost 10,000 units. Well, I do that also. Okay, <laughs> great. You know, so I mean, but I don't have to doing speak about it because everyone yeah, does. But what I'm saying is, you are, you are really one up yes. notch. Yes. I don't think anyone up. Well, the idea is actually to mention these pieces because it's just about five or seven percent of our of our activity. These very exclusive things. The idea is that these kinds of things can and are already coming our way in India and uh, I do hope that the market will evolve so that the general quality can one day maybe uh, compete with made in Italy or made some other place because I do believe we have the talent and we have the knowledge in this country. It's just the circumstances that we don't have as yet. So I do realize that somewhere uh, I'm, I'm maybe not on the same uh, uh, topic and train as everyone else. I do realize that. But by training people and making them understand this job they are understanding it and they are evolving into other things. Thank you. Yeah, just one question. Uh, taking the lead from Mr. Kapoor's point, like I visited factories of Tarun Telyani and like uh, they are also doing very high value stuff. So basically they don't care about improving production per se. So from where did the drive come in you actually? Because most of the other designers are not on those lines, I guess. <laughs> exactly, exactly. That is the same thing I am asking. I'm sorry. <laughs> Absolutely, because I'm not selling it in India, you're right. <laughs> okay, are there, if there are no more questions, then we can go on to lunch. Okay. Let, let them complete the formalities. All right. Yes. Oh, okay. right, last question. Yes. Yeah, more than a question, an observation, because I've been involved with Heyman's factory now for the last two months. 
and uh, would just like to mention that yes it is a notch uh, up as mr kapoor was mentioning the whole philosophy and the whole dna is very different when i walked in the factory it requires a very different um, you know approach from my side also because i'm handling other six units for ogtc under the lean scheme but uh, uh, with hemans factory it's it's already like let's say about a 30% 5s done already you see a lot of uh, uh, you know focus on the operators on training on giving them enough space to sit and uh, you know um, the layouts being correct and stuff like that so definitely um, his um, i think uh, we have we've had quite a few chatting sessions also where we sat down and we understood what he needs to be done and the vision is very different so it's not different from any other uh, person who says i want a productivity increase only but uh, yes uh, quality productivity visibility i think more transparency in the systems is what we are looking at with the factory and it's it's an amazing factory so thank you, thank you.